administration uh, today. Joining me right now to discuss this, Michael Eric Dyson, a sociology professor at Georgetown University and author of the book Tears We Cannot Stop. Also with me, CNN political commentator Ben Ferguson. Thanks so much to both of you gentlemen for uh, joining me. Um, so, Michael, you first. How do you interpret all that is unfolding? Well, I think, Fred, first of all, that it indicates that these players understand that they were deeply and profoundly insulted by the President of the United States of America. So in order to protect the integrity of their game, they felt they had no choice but to lock arms and lock aims with those players who have already uh, understood that this is bigger than a protest about a flag. It's not about the, a national anthem or the flag. It was primarily Colin Kaepernick's response was to black people who were unarmed being shot down in the streets by police and asking the criminal justice system to be held accountable. That resulted in his taking a knee during the national anthem because it did not signify the full acceptance of African-American people in this country. So now, with the insult that the president delivered on, I think, Friday night, the rest of the league got in order, so to speak, and understood this is something that not only hurts those particular players of color, this hurts the game, this hurts the nation, and now they have forged connections in a way that couldn't have been anticipated. So I think intentionally, Donald Trump has really forged a real solidarity among many of those players who understand that these issues transcend sports and we can't have the bully pulpit of the President of the United States of America attempting to control the actions of private citizens. So then I wonder, you know, the President has said this is an issue of respecting America, respecting the flag, respecting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, military vets, and that kneeling is disrespectful. No. But now that the franchise Right. nearly overall has come out with this statement today uh, locking arms kneeling hands on each other's shoulders right. has that changed the message now of the intent behind kneeling has it changed the dialogue I, I can't, the message I can't I can't speak for the players they're the ones that are gonna have to decide if this is them just jumping on a bandwagon uh, which I think a lot of them actually are because they saw an easy easy chance to go after uh, Donald Trump who it's very clear that many of them don't like but let's be clear about where this started um, you have a guy in Colin Kaepernick that wore socks that depicted police officers in this country as pigs a guy that also wore shirts honoring Fidel Castro uh, I have a hard time being lectured from a guy that says that he's standing up for police brutality when he supports a guy that's been brutal to all of his people as a dictator in Fidel Castro and refers to the police, all police, and wear socks depicting them as pigs in general statements. I also have a hard time respecting a guy who acts like he's some sort of justice warrior when he didn't even spend the time to register to vote, didn't even vote in the last election. To our knowledge, he's still not even registered to vote. So I would say to all the NFL owners and all the NFL players are jumping on the Colin Kaepernick is somehow a victim bandwagon, even though he opted out of his own contract. Look at where this all started. Look at who started this protest. Look at what Colin Kaepernick is. He's an empty suit who went out there and decided I'm going to kneel during the national anthem when he didn't even have the guts to vote in an election. And he praises Fidel Castro who has brutalized and beaten and murdered his own people and then refers to the police as pigs by, by wearing well, clothes let me say this. that can show I, that. Okay, can so I, can Michael, I respond is that, that what this is about? Up. Okay, let Michael. Me. Yeah, let me respond to that. First of all, black people were, were wearing the uniform of the United States of America, returned home from World War II as veterans, and were murdered by white supremacists, bigots, who denied the legitimacy and, that, and repudiated. That was wrong. Let me finish, sir. I didn't interrupt you. I'm agreeing you. with you. Repudiated, I'm agreeing with okay, you. Okay, repudiated their American oh, the identity. So, what? I, let me finish. So, what I'm saying to you is that those people who committed those heinous acts, of course, were un American, were not patriots, and didn't understand. Sam, the complicated nature of black people's relationship to a country that we have often stood proudly for a flag that did not protect us. So you can you can name legitimate flaws in Colin Kaepernick's approach without undercutting the basic moral trajectory of what he's saying, because it's bigger than Colin Kaepernick. You can discount Colin Kaepernick. And the fact is, unarmed black people still die in disproportionate numbers from uh, police people. The, the facts that he was highlighting and underscoring are still real today. So 
we can we can discount Colin Kaepernick altogether and still say that the issues that he highlighted and that he confronts must be dealt with. And those owners Michael, have had a Michael, reckoning with themselves question. in a very serious and fundamental let, fashion let and then joining themselves with others who do the same Michael, thing. Me, I think uh, that represents me, progress. Michael, my, let me just ask you one question. D- do you not find it a little bit of hypocrisy? that the majority of these players, until Donald Trump said what he said the other night about respecting this country, had not gotten involved off the field. The majority of them, and, and you may you, you may be you know a stat on this, I would love to know how many of the players that are kneeling uh, and how many of the players that were in the locker room today refusing to come out uh, and, and, and actually agree that this is the greatest country in the world and that we should honor those who have fought to protect and defend our freedoms, who have fought and given the ultimate sacrifices of all races, how yes. many of them do you actually think are even, yeah, seriously, how many of them do you actually me, think me, are me, even... But I wonder, Ben, are you Both. conflating different issues? Let, is this an issue of choice? I mean, that, that one player I, I, I decided to... But let me that, even that answer that one player question. decided to take this approach uh, does not necessarily mean that all you know, players have to take the same approach. Go ahead, Michael. Exactly. Well, here, here's the point, too. Uh, first of all, we can never determine when people will buy in to an understanding of the politics of their culture. Look, mothers who have their sons go killed, uh, get killed in foreign theaters of war then become, uh, if you will, radicalized in a positive way, and they become activists against some of the things that they find problematic with the military. Many of them do, do not, not. Let me finish. Do not equate uh, the fact that, that people die for that flag on foreign theaters of war with the fact that what they die for is the right for people in America to be able to voice their opinions. It is not disrespectful because, first of all, soldiers are not the only people who stand up for that flag. Number two, many soldiers came yeah. out in defense I'm of Colin Kaepernick. Right Let me finish, it. sir. Wait, wait, wait. Many people, I didn't interrupt you. Many people came out in defense who fought in the foreign wars and who fought it for America, came out and said that what Colin Kaepernick is doing is right. And then many Many police people support Colin Kaepernick for what he's doing. So all I'm saying to you, you do not have a copyright on uh, veterans in this country who have done valiant I, war, who have done valiant war, who have valiantly fought in this country, do not have a copyright. So that Martin Luther King Jr. never fought a day in a foreign war, right. but was one of the greatest right. Americans we produce. We cannot reduce right. the complication of patriotism to the fact that you fought in a, a foreign right. war. Michael, we Michael, who uh, love this country now, okay? on this side I heard what you have said. to also be defended as well. I, I find it interesting. That, that you want to somehow act as if there's a bunch of veterans are on your side. There was one veteran today in the NFL who is the only player that understood that the American flag is bigger than any football player. And he walked out of that locker room and stood there by himself with it when he was sitting there with the Steelers. The rest of his team, in my opinion, are a bunch of cowards who stayed in that locker room and don't even fully understand what exactly this is all about, except for the fact they said, oh, I'm going to jump on this bandwagon. Did they vote? Are they registered to vote? Have they been socially active uh, on these issues? Go that back and look at these teams make, and tell me how many of them have that, Right is right and wrong is wrong. It doesn't make a difference. That was whether a demonstration of choice, is it that's not? Right. I mean, the I, I, team is bandwagon. allowing, the team has said it was allowing players to make the choice whether they wanted to go out there and, and or whether they men. didn't. But for Drake, are, look men. at the NFL right now. The, we're, we're, the, the NFL stands up today and these owners stand up next to their players and they act like they're doing some grand work. This is a league that's incredibly flawed. A league that helps cover up when many of their players have physically abused and assaulted and beaten their wives and girlfriends who have kept them in the league and minimize what they do when they literally beat their wives and beat their girlfriends. And now they come out on some act like they're on some moral high ground as if no, they're making some moral my, wait, club. Ben, let me, let me, okay, let me just, let me, ben, the NFL you're making my point for me. You're, you're making, right, you're making on, my ben. point for me. Ahead, here's Michael. a league, here's a league that has allowed that kind of thing to go on. And yet those players have been allowed to play, but a man who is engaged in peaceful protests, doing nothing more to take a knee so that people can rise upon the voice that he articulates for them. The platform he provides for them, they are then demonized, stigmatized, and then he is run up, blackballed out of the out league. Of a Here's a guy, well, let me finish. Here's a guy who is well, <laughs> who, who plays well enough right now to be starting ahead of at least eight quarterbacks in this league, and the quarterback plays so, let me finish. The quarterback play so far in this league has been horrible. Colin Kaepernick's services can be caught on. He was blackballed. This has shifted the dialogue and the debate now that even many white players, because the NFL is Michael, 69.7% Michael. black. Let me finish. Wait, 
69.7% black. The ownership is primarily white. So what we see now here is that there is a coming, perhaps, together closer to understand that those players on the gridiron are African American. They see their brothers and sisters getting killed every day, and they want to make a statement. They don't have to register to vote. They don't have to be 